And for archival purposes, again, can we please have your name and the title you would like to go by? Sure. My name is Alex Yetzi, I-E-Z-Z-I, -I, and I am a research geophysicist at the USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory. And your latest release this morning says that this latest earthquake swarm at Mount Rainier has surpassed the last large one from 2009 in several areas. What are you seeing? Yeah, so the largest swarm we had seen prior to this one was in 2009, like you mentioned. So that was the kind of um, thing that we were looking at most. As of now, we're right around the same duration, about two and a half days. So we might surpass that since events keep going. Um, but in terms of the total number of events that have been recorded, the event rate or the peak event rate, and the energy release of those events over the duration of the swarm have now kind of surpassed the 2009 one. And so one thing to kind of note is back in 2009, we had less earthquakes. That was 15 years ago, or um, less seismometers, actually. But the network was still like pretty decent back then. And so one metric that I think is a really good one to look at is how many earthquakes greater than magnitude one happened in 2009 versus happening now. So in 2009, uh, there were only 15 events greater than magnitude one, whereas now we're at 55 um, events greater than magnitude one and still going. And so we would have been able to see those events since they're large enough um, at that time pretty equally. And you know, does this mean anything significant or are you still kind of considering it as normal within the volcano's patterns? Yeah, it's not necessarily, I mean, it is a significant swarm, but it's not necessarily changing what we know about the volcano just yet. Um, it still is indicative of having hydrothermal fluids moving below the surface. So we don't think it's indicative of having magmatic unrest or leading towards an eruption at this point. Um, but we have, it is the most significant event since we've been having monitoring equipment at Rain Mount Rainier. And we have to remember that Mount Rainier is really old. We've only been monitoring it for maybe 40, 50 years now. Um, so just because it's the most significant one we've seen on equipment doesn't mean this hasn't happened in the past prior to 2009. So when you say this is the most significant event observed with this equipment so far, does that mean it's fair to say that this is the largest earthquake swarm that we have on record, or is it just the largest we've seen since 2009? It's the largest one we have at re on record at Mount Rainier. And um, you've mentioned uh, in the right leases that the peak of the swarm was on Tuesday with mm -hmm. about like 26 or so per hour. It's kind of decreased to a few per hour since then. Is that level of decrease, are we still seeing a, a consistent level of earthquakes happening per hour, or is it still continu continuing to decrease gradually over time? Yeah, so like you mentioned, we were up at maybe 26 locatable events happening at the peak on Tuesday morning, afternoon-ish. Um, since then, it kind of decreased, and it's been waxing and waning. So every couple of hours, it, we kind of see a slight increase, slight decrease. Uh, since about Tuesday evening, it's been less than about 12 events per hour and more close to five events per hour on average, but tiny little increases and decreases throughout that time. Now, um, have you learned anything new about Mount Rainier and what's going on underneath the surface while this has been going on? Yeah, so this is going to take a bit of time. Right now we're kind of in triage mode, just making sure we're monitoring and making sure we're not leading towards an eruption. Um, but we're definitely going to learn a ton about Mount Rainier that we didn't know beforehand, just based on the amount of events that are happening and the fact that our monitoring instrumentation is so much more than we've had in the past. Um, so, so I think in, a, in the next coming months, we'll learn a ton about the volcano. Um, but we are learning that what else could be background. Like these are the swarms that are capable at Mount Rainier, and that's good to know and to help us improve our monitoring in the future. Is there anything in particular that you're looking for or hoping to learn from this event? Uh, personally, a slight decrease in seismicity would be awesome. I'd like to get a little more sleep. Um, but, but but in all seri seriousness, we're just trying to learn as much as we can about Rainier and see what its uh, behavior is. So we're not looking for anything in particular. We're just gathering as much information as we can and seeing what we can learn. And Mount Rainier normally has, you know, eight or nine earthquakes a month as is. You've mentioned these swarms um, are believed to be caused by the circulation of fluids. Are the normal monthly earthquakes also caused by that same fluid movement or are there other triggers for those earthquakes as well? 
Yeah, so that's one of the triggers for the earthquakes that happen kind of regularly at Mount Rainier, but there's it's also a quite uh, it's an active volcano, and there's other things like glaciers on it that can also cause earthquakes. So sometimes, especially it's kind of a seasonal effect, we see a lot of glacier earthquakes. So that's just glaciers moving on the volcano. Um, it also is a steep ice clad volcano. So sometimes we see rock falls, avalanches, serac falls. Um, so any combination of those can can lead to kind of like that background seismicity or background events we see at Mount Rainier. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is nearby the volcano, not related to the volcano, it's a, a tectonic, but there is a fault and it's called the West Rainier Seismic Zone. And so there also are earthquakes that occur over there as well. And for anyone who wants to keep hiking or recreating around the mountain while this is going on, is there any danger that's being posed by this? No, so we don't think that there's an increase in danger at the volcano at this time, um, but just keep, we'll keep people posted on our volcano notification system and our social medias if that changes, but at this time, uh, no change. And so far, the most intense one that we've seen was around 2.3. Is that still correct? Correct. Yes. Right. And so that's still too small for the average person to be able to feel just walking around, how strong would these earthquakes have to be for anyone to start actually noticing them? Yeah. And so a two and a half is kind of the limit of what a person could feel. I felt one in my lifetime and that was, it was very shallow within about a kilometer of the surface and I was asleep. So I was, or I was laying down, so I wasn't moving at all. And you're kind of just like, oh, what was that? And that was kind of a two and a half near the surface. Um, so there's this trade-off between how big the earthquake is and how deep it is. Um, so you'd have to have it pretty shallow, but some pretty shallow earthquakes, maybe around four, people would start to notice, um, especially if they're walking around and living their daily lives and not sitting completely still. And is there any way to tell how long this might keep going on? It's a great question. I think that's something that we're trying to learn now. Uh, like, like I mentioned earlier in the interview, the 2009 swarm was the best analog we have for a swarm of this size. And we're at that roughly two and a half day mark. So when that swarm started to end. Um, so I guess we it's kind of just a wait and see. Um, and we'll see what happens. Oh, well, thank you, Alex. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? No, just keep an eye on our notification system and the social medias, and we'll update you as we have more, more information. All right. Go ahead. Thank you so much again. Awesome. No problem. Let us know if uh, you want more questions. All right. We're all well happy might. to jump on Zoom. Yeah. Anytime I see anything like new or interesting about this, I'll be sending you an email. <laughs> Perfect. I'll, I'll keep an eye on my emails. All right. All right. Have a great day. You too. Bye.